So I'm just one sleep away now from meeting the 80 other people who will be traveling with me for 2017 through a program called Remote Year. But for the last couple of weeks, I've been here in Costa Rica where I've enrolled myself in something called a learning vacation. This video is going to be about what I've been doing for the last couple of weeks here at the School of the World in Costa Rica and why this is definitely something to put on the essentials list for every single travel. So the School of the World is located at Haco Beach in Costa Rica which is about an hour and a half drive from the main airport of uh, San Jose. Um, and think of it as a mixture between a homestay, a hostel and a school. Students are able to mix and match from the different modules that the school offers to create the ideal itinerary over the course of the week. So you can choose between uh, surfing, Spanish, yoga, GoPro and also photography classes. For me, I chose um, Spanish and surfing. Both of those items have been high on my bucket list and considering I'll be in um, Spanish markets for the first six months of my remote year, I thought it'd be great to have a, a good on-ramp before I got to some of these places. Um, and surfing, because it's uh, always interesting when you have a conversation with people uh, from around the world who inherently assume that you know how to surf given that you've grown up in Sydney. So I've always wanted to learn, never got the chance to do it, never had the time. And so it's been a, a fantastic couple of weeks to, to do both of those things and to, to get a good grounding and knowledge from the awesome instructors that the school has on offer. So let's start by going through what a uh, typical day looks like here at the School of the World. Um, the class timings actually change depending on the tide, so they prioritise you know, sending people out to surf during the best conditions. So uh, during the first week we were surfing pretty early in the morning, so I'd be getting up at about 6 to go surfing uh, at 6.30 or 7am. And then I'd get back, have about 20 minutes to uh, have a bite to eat or have a quick shower after surfing and jump straight into a two hour Spanish class. And Spanish class is pretty intimate, there's one teacher, uh, we had a lady named um, Monica and she was absolutely fantastic. And so it was me and two other people in our beginners class and we usually spend about two hours on um, grammar, verbs uh, and, and basic structure of the language and then kind of got into practice uh, through the curriculum that they teach you here. And then later in the day they also take you on a field trip, so they call it a lab, but basically it's an idea of trying to get out into the real world and use Spanish, so whether it's ordering food at a restaurant, whether it's going and um, uh, going to your local juice cafe and ordering a drink, but just get, getting yourself out there and, and practicing the stuff that you are actually learning. And depending on how busy you want your schedule to be, you can pop into a, a yoga class, uh, which is pretty zen and pretty relaxed, I've been doing that a couple of times as well. Um, and then by the time you finish it, you're pretty tired, but there's such a positive vibe here, everyone's pretty friendly, that you know, kind of leads to you going out most, most evenings. So that process gets repeated pretty much every day for the week, and it's been, it's been awesome, it's been absolutely awesome. So in terms of my, uh, my favorite things, um, the first one would have to definitely be surfing. It's been so high on my bucket list for a long time that it was, uh, it was awesome to just get out into the water and, and actually try it for the first time. Um, I also love going to the beach and being in Seattle for the last couple of years, I never got the chance to really um, go to the beach too much. I'd only be able to go when I took vacations or holidays. So it's great to just have the beach uh, within a two minute walk from, from where I was staying. Um, second one is really around this place in general. The vibe is, is infectious and positive and the, this unique balance between a, a homestay and a, and a hostel really means that you can make friends extremely easily. You've got the relaxed um, setting to, to start to um, learn things and uh, concentrate on what, you've, what you came here to do. And then at night time it becomes a vibe where if you want to hang out there are people that are you know, super keen to go out with you for, for a night out of the town. So the vibe has been phenomenal, making friends has been incredible. Uh, the thing that's different to a hostel is that it isn't as transient as, as what you'd expect. So given we're on uh, week-long schedules that people arrive on Saturday and leave on the following Saturday, um, you're together for a week and you're able to form those good connections and not have people leave in and out as you get at, at other hostels. In terms of the question of would I come back, um, I definitely would, but probably not uh, anytime soon. I think there's a lot more uh, things that I want to go try, but it'll be some time before I, uh, I make my way to this part of the world again. So I'll leave you with that there, and I'll see you for the next episode in Mexico in a couple of weeks. Peace.